So with the cables out of the way, we're turning our tension back onto both the bodywork and the interior. Before we get right into doing some dashboard work, we need to do a little bit more around the outside of the car because we need to close in this side of the body to work out where the dashboard's going to come to and generally what we're going to do on each side of the car around this point. Now I put a little bit more on around the wing mirror, so this is all closed in and this fits really nicely and the wing mirror goes on approximately like that. I actually need to disassemble it a bit more to completely fit it in, but you get the idea how all of this bodywork wraps around the original TT clamshell of the wing mirror. So we'll put that to one side, but we need to work out what we're going to do across the back of this section and while we're at it we might as well deal with this whole section around the front of the um, intake and the sort of side pod towards where the back wheel is. Now we've had a couple of bits of bodywork for here kicking around for a while and a couple of ideas floating around and one of them is this piece which will go on just about there but now I'm questioning whether or not to not weld this piece on but make it bigger and have it going all the way across into the side of the car and that means I need to frame up and work out exactly what's happening with this section of the car. Now originally the bodywork was going to be welded all the way up from here right the way across onto the top edge of the inner chassis just down here and we'll obviously trim this panel back so that we have something to go onto. And I thought actually might, that might not be the best option. Maybe there is the possibility to have this opening so there's a little bit extra storage and it makes life easier to get into the side pods down this way in order to store things because it would be nice if we could have a canvas roof or something that would stow into the side of the car. So having an, a slightly bigger portal around here would make that an awful lot easier. So that kind of goes into having this section all done in one piece, the framework in here and also filling in this gap across the front. Originally I was going to do something very similar to this and just fill in this gap and it would just deal with this section in here at a later date. But actually now I don't think that's the right way to go. So we've got a couple of these ready, these are just going to get welded in across there and that will finish in the rest of this section of the car uh, leading in towards the inner chassis. And obviously we've trimmed a little bit away so that we're not welding onto the alley sheet, that wouldn't work. Um, and we're going to have to just roll this side under so it fits onto the upper brace, the, or the upper um, section, the upper cross beam of the inlet. So with this in, we'll then be able to close off the inner panel here and just pop rivet that using the same holes that we have for this panel. We'll just drill these out, put an extra panel in, have it coming across and close off the back there because we don't want this section to be open all the way into the vents at the back. That, I don't think that would be particularly good and we need to close it off somehow. So a nice little two angle panel that will come across the floor, up and into there will be exactly what we need. So to make the internal panel I made use of another piece of aluminium from the old kit car panels which uh, this one actually went along the gearbox tunnel before we got rid of it so similar to one of the other pieces that we cut off the front but this turned into this abomination of folds and it seems this stuff's actually a little bit thicker than the things we used on the back this looks like it's at least a millimetre and this is tough to bend compared to that which I think was 0.7 could be wrong but either way this stuff is a real nightmare it's taking me the better part of an hour to bend all of this up and this drops in behind there There was a couple of bits we needed to cut around. I've got this plastic channel, which I was going to remove, but it has all of the battery cables in it to go to the fuse box and everything else. And I thought about taking them out and leaving them without this channel on, but actually it works really well to protect them against the sharp edges of all of the cornering. So even though we're probably going to put a little bit of rubber around them, it's still just that extra little bit of security, which is really quite nice. So that fits in. I'm not going to knock it all the way in, but you'll have to trust me that it does fit right up against the back because it's a nightmare to get in and a nightmare to get out again once it's fully wedged against the back of here, up against the top and against the inside. So this will get pop riveted in later because I have to make another one from this piece that I showed you before for the other side and I really don't want to have to drill it out or take all of the guesswork of basically making it oversized and trimming it, trimming it, trimming it down. But otherwise, this panel across here is looking really nice. Uh, this is all going to flap in quite nicely, but it's getting on to be about half past eight at night and I've made enough banging shaping this uh, and I don't particularly want to get the grinder out and shave all of this down this evening. So I'm going to leave it for now, come back and do something about this side tomorrow. 
Well, excuse the top on the top of the car and the big black void in the middle. It's been raining all day today, and this is the first time I've been able to get the camera out. But I have got a little bit of work done. I managed to weld in that panel. I decided not to just make a new one and waste a bigger piece of stock. Didn't seem it worthwhile when I've got two cut, so I'd be wasting both of them anyway. So that's now all welded in, and I've got another piece cut to weld on the inside edge. Now to get the dimensions for this piece, I obviously had to finish off the spars that are going to hold it up. And that included moving the one that came horizontally parallel with the floor across onto the outside edge of this um, pod section. And that's just so that the access way through this panel is going to be a little bit easier. I've also added in this brace that goes from the outside of the wing all the way down onto the inside of the cab. So that now frames up the rest of this section really nicely. And I can get this panel welded on, which if I get it the right way around, goes on like that. Now it's a little bit tall at the top, I decided it was easier to just weld this on and then trim it to size once these pieces have been welded on, so I'm not going to make a mistake at the top here. And I've also finished off and cleaned up this whole panel at the back, and I've welded in a little drip tray just down the side here. So this is just another piece of the 0.7mm steel, same as this, welded in at an angle down there, so that when the um, closing lid goes over the top of here, whatever falls down the back will come out of the car and not drip into the compartment inside. So I'll also have to weld another one of those down this side once this panel is on. Well this panel's now in and whilst I was trimming it up to make sure I had the fit right, I actually noticed there was enough material on the bottom. If I just shimmied it down about a quarter of an inch, I had easily enough material to fold round and just build a drip channel directly in, which is probably what I should have done on this side had I thought about it. But this was way easier and way faster because I didn't have to weld on a tiny little thin bit of steel and then try and clean it down so it had something that would actually shed water rather than just beading up in all of the weld marks. So that is much, much better. Now with that in, this whole panel side is complete. Obviously it needs a little bit of um, tapping with the hammer just to make sure that all of the ripples are out. Actually not too many ripples in it. There's a little bit of a bow here and a little bit of a bow outwards here and a dip in there. And I actually don't mind it too much being like that. So I might just try and bring this one in a touch and leave this one out. We'll see once I get some paint on it and really check it. It's difficult to tell with all the different marks on it how it actually looks. So I'll throw some primer on there and see what it looks like. But that's all also tied into the very top edge of the wing now, which is really, really satisfying to see. And with both the drip channels in, I've also been able to start making the door that will sit on the top of here. So this is the hatch panel that will go over this section. And it basically just fits on like that. It is some inch bar, some 10 mil tube, and some half inch box cut down into a piece of angle. So it just sits over the top. And the plan for this is to have it so that it hinges like this and opens up. I don't want it going that way particularly because then you can't get into it from the inside of the car which is more likely and if it opens this way you can get in from the inside and the outside so it seems much better to do it that way around. Plus if it went this way there might be some clearance issues although it does seem to clear reasonably well. However I have started making up a couple of little bits of hinge to go inside here whilst it was raining earlier on. So this is the hinge that I've been playing around with today. It's made of some 3mm plate, some 10mm tube, and an M5 rivnut. Now the rivnut, conveniently, its outside diameter for the hole that you need to, to compress it into is 7mm, and the inside diameter of this tube is 7mm, so that makes it extremely convenient. So an M5 bolt just goes through into the back of here, once I actually get it so it's not cross-threaded. I can see here that the bolt isn't actually perpendicular to the mounting plate, and that's because the bolt is going to be in line and parallel with this bottom edge of the door here, and obviously the frame panels that it's going to bolt onto aren't in the same place, so they need to be slightly differently angled inwards at each end like this in order to make the hinge work. So I'm going to throw this piece onto the inside edge of this drip tray here, and then test it with another piece of plate and just weld it onto the inside very very quickly and just see whether or not this mechanism actually works because if this edge clashes with the bottom edge of the bodywork here obviously it's a no-go.
Well, the second version of that works a lot better than the first. The first I had the hinge in the wrong place, or rather I had the pivot in the wrong place, so it was immediately clashing into the bodywork. And I guess I forgot some fairly key points of what we'll call hinge theory. Um, and basically I needed the pivot point much further below the piece that I was trying to avoid, um, so that when it started pivoting it came up and moved around in a much bigger arc than the piece of bodywork that I didn't want it to clash with. So now it works really nicely. And you can see here that kind of mess of steel that I've welded together. Um, this is just an extension piece that I put in to get it to go around and give it a bit more of a throat so it actually comes over and clears this piece of the bodywork. What worked right from the start though was the actual pivot point bracket itself. That being non-perpendicular, right off axis there, worked really, really nicely and put the pivot dead in line along there. That's exactly where it wanted to rotate around. So that worked really well. So I need to make another one of these pivots going in the other direction for this end and then some brackets to attach it onto the frame. Then we can actually put some proper skin on this once we've made sure it actually works. Well, I won't lie, this episode has taken a bit of a left turn. I did not expect to be still working on the outside of the car. I wanted to be working on the inside and doing some dashboard stuff, but it is what it is. And that was when this was just a solid welded in panel that would have been maybe an hour's worth of work. Instead, making this section, not even putting the skin on this, making this section has taken the better part of four hours, but, I do now have an opening panel and a much bigger storage compartment down the side of the car and I really really like this. Now quite clearly it's not finished yet, it obviously doesn't have the skin on, I'm not putting that on yet until I've built one for the other side which I'll save you the chore of watching me do and I'll do that another time because this took as I say about four hours to do and there's a little bit of rub the one of the um, hinge arms just rubs on the side of the drip tray there which really isn't anything to be worried about at all but otherwise I am really pleased with how that actually operates it does look really really good and once I get this panel on this side of the car is going to look amazing I am not looking forward to making another set of this on the other side of the car with all of these panels and everything else in but it is going to be worth it once it's all done Obviously I said I wanted a latch on the inside to try and hold this closed and stop it just rattling and banging around like that, so I'm going to have to work on something for that. Possibly, maybe magnets might work, but then if I have something that I can actually latch it and possibly even lock it, that would be even better still. Now next time, I am actually going to start working on the frame for the dashboard, and I want to have that in two pieces so that we can take off either this side or that side. If we need to do maintenance on the blower and the heater matrix, I don't have to take all of the instrument cluster apart, so that's going to be an interesting one to do. And obviously we've got the gear stick ready to go in as soon as we get some longer cables. Check out shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy merch, including these long sleeve t-shirts, which are actually standing up quite well to all of the abuse they're getting putting this together. And if you want to support us more directly you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month in the meantime do make sure you subscribe to the channel thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time